Hi, well here we are again going to do some special projects. This week I've been working out in my garden, looking at all the plants and the trees that are blooming and listening to the birds. It was just so wonderful. I'm sure you're having a lot of fun being outside with your brothers and sisters and playing. Today we're going to take a special look at what is happening that is so exciting, but we might not even notice unless we take the time to talk about it. And that's trees. The trees are busy right now because they've been sleeping all winter and now the Lord is waking them up. We're having a new season. There's buds and life and they're just bursting forth with joy and laughter and praise to the Lord. So let's take a minute and look at something. I want to show you some pussy willows that have bloomed and are really, really fuzzy. Can you see them? I went down to Mr. Martinez's, you know that lake down there by his house? There's all kinds of interesting things down there. I saw some good ones, but I didn't have on any rubber boots, so got these. Remember how we painted those catkins last week? I thought those were really, really cute. And this is um, up here. Somehow the bees come and get pollen to make honey. Now here's another. This is a tree, a laurel, I think, that's blooming. I thought, oh, the flowers are so pretty. These are the kind of things that you would enjoy looking under a microscope at because it's a whole beautiful world. All right, and then I'm not sure what kind of a plant this is, but look at the blooms on that. It's just so beautiful. Now I wanna look at these buds. Shall I take it out? Is that a good plan? All right, oh, well, I'll take this one too. These little bumps are brand new life. And they swell up and then they come out and make little leaves that would look kind of like this. Then they make, here's part of last year's. This hasn't, that's last year's bloom. It hasn't fallen off yet. And then these are going to get bigger and bigger from trees. Now look at this ivy. Look how it's little tiny up here. It starts getting bigger down here because this is closer to the trunk. So the life comes up here kind of like water. You've, you've talked with Mrs. Hill about that, how the water goes, the life goes through the stems. Okay, up here, these are the teeny tiny ones up top. All this is new life that is being created all the time. Let's see, what else do we have? Let's take... Can you leave them in? What? Can I can leave this in? Okay. This one, these are starting to swell. I thought they were so pretty. They're kind of um, oval-shaped. Okay, the thing about trees, trees are really a gift to us from God. They give us food, like plums and bananas. We don't have any banana trees around here. Uh, peaches, avocados, not pineapples. They grow on a bush. Um, not only do they give us food, but they're doing something all the time for everyone that it's good to remember. And I know you've talked about this with Mrs. Hill. They are making oxygen so we can breathe. I breathe in, I breathe in oxygen. When I breathe out, I breathe out carbon monoxide. And the trees like, they like carbon monoxide. So they are giving us their gift all the time. 
even when we're sleeping, they're still serving us because God has made all of his creation to serve each other. I just think it's so wonderful. I want to show you one more thing. Thank you. So even the bark on trees is different. So I went outside and I took some oil pastels and I put this paper up next to the, to the bark and I rubbed it. And these are two different trees. This one is a dogwood. And this one is a plum tree. Now see, they're kind of the same because I used brown, but see how the lines and bumps and texture on them is different? This one really has longer lines of it. I just like that. That's their, that's like a skin for trees. They have to have it. It protects them, all the things that are happening on the inside. Now look at this one. I have a magnolia tree in the front with those pretty purpley pink blooms. That's this one. And then this one is next door. It's a Japanese maple. And it's really different than that one. It has more lines in it. I just thought that was neat. Okay, that's texture. Now, oh, could I please have my iPad? I forgot something, but that's all right. Thank you. I want to tell you about the different forms and shapes of trees because they're different. Okay, let me think, where is this? There, ah, oh, here it is. So I'll make it bigger and then, can you turn it this way? Yep. yep. Can you see it? Yes? Yep. Okay, I can make it a little bigger. See this one right here? Now think about shapes. This tree is pretty round, the canopy. That's what this part's called, the green part, the leaf canopy. Can you see that? You can imagine, you could imagine a circle, couldn't you? Then this one, wow, this one is big spreading, probably like some of those big maples that just get huge, so big, or big oaks. See how it's spreading out? Now look at these, these are the evergreens. They're more like a pyramid or a triangle. And they don't lose their leaves. They keep their leaves all year. Now look at this one. This one is definitely an oval. And you'll see trees like this. If you look when you're driving around or when you're outside playing, or if you live um, oh, over there where there's a lot of trees like a green belt behind you, some of these are planted in your yards also. This would, if you could imagine, if you were gonna figure out the shape to start drawing it or painting it, that's an oval. This one's kind of like a cone, isn't it? Like an upside down ice cream cone. This reminds me of those ones, those, Mr. Hill knows all the names, thugas, I think that's what they're called, where people plant them kind of close together and they get really, really tall and they're evergreens. This one is kind of like a vase. Look, imagine this. See, it comes, it's narrower at the bottom, and then it gets wider, almost like a fountain, kind of. A lot of the pretty pink cherry trees that are blooming are shaped like this. Ooh, now these are, these get big. These are, how do you say that? Columnar? Columnar. I don't know. Columnar, I think. But they're like columns. You know who has this at their house is their some at Josh's house, between Josh's and, and uh, Mr. Williams' house. They get super, 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 super tall. And uh, Mrs. Kathy Kerrigan has those too. Really, really tall. Sometimes they plant a lot of them in a row. All right, now here, this one, this one has little, um, it's almost like kind of like little clouds Boom, boom, right here. It's, it's open. It's, it's a lot of space between the canopy. You always want to leave space in there when you're painting trees like that. 
And here's a weeping one. Like some people have willows. You know how they hang down? They're really pretty. This one's a regular. It just is like all different everywhere. Here's some shrubs. Kind of rounded. Now here's a hedge. They would grow kind of jaggy, but people can trim them up and make them look like squares or rectangles. And then here, this one reminds me of those um, pretty pink cherry trees that bloom and the branches hang down like that and people trim them so they're pretty straight. It's kind of like an upside down gumdrop, maybe. This, one's, this one here is pretty round. This one's called a mop top. And then this one, these are just upright. This is kind of like a gumdrop, it really is. And this one is longer and narrower. So God made a lot of different shapes of trees for us to enjoy. So that's our project for today, is going to be painting a couple of trees. Let me show you. We're going to use our watercolors. Here it is. We're going to use wet on wet. But instead of using a paintbrush to paint these, we're going to use our wax paper as a paintbrush. We're going to crumple it up. Now I want to show you something here. Do you see this? Do you see that letter? That looks like a V, doesn't it? Whenever we're painting trees or drawing them, they're in V's, the branches are, and W's. See, it's kind of a W there. If you remember that, that will help you. And they're skinnier at the top and fatter at the bottom. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, well, let me show you my colors and let's go over what we need. There's my colors I have. For my pink trees, I have red, different shades of red. I have browns for my trunk, and then I have greens and yellows for this green and yellow tree. I have two brushes. I have a bigger one and a smaller one that I'm going to use for my trunk. But if you don't have a really big one like this, that's okay. You use what you have, and it's going to work really well. I have my watercolor paper, my half sheet. We're going to do a portrait. I have paper towels, and then I have two waters. I have one that I'm going to use for the pinks and one that I'm going to use for the greens and yellow because I don't want my pink trees to look green. Okay, and then I have my palette. Now you should have two paper plates, one to mix your greens, one to mix your reds. So they, uh, that will be easier for you. So the first thing we're going to do here with our tape, we have tape, is we're going to tape it down. And remember the trick is rub it, let it rub on your clothes, on your pants or on your shirt first. I like to start at the top. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. It just does give it a really nice finished look, makes it look nice. I think you're going to like this because this is different. And um, it's kind of challenging. I had to practice a few times. Okay, get this there. Get this taped down. All of your pictures that I looked at of the pussy willows were so nice. I, I just was very very pleased with all of them. Your nice pictures that you send me, that's really so good. I'm glad you're having fun doing it. And I'm glad to see your faces, because here I am talking to you, but I can't see your face. But I know you're there. Okay, so let's put this to the side. The first thing I'm going to start with is my largest tree right here. I'm going to start at the top with not a whole lot of pressure and I'm just going to go down. And I'm going to do this one too and I'm going to go down and join them. And this tree 
is going, because it's bigger, I'm going to make it a little closer to the bottom of the edge. And that's one way we can show depth because we have a flat piece of paper and the, where we place things, it's going to trick our eyes so that it looks like we have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background, and that it looks like three-dimensional. That's what we're going to try to do with this. Okay, so I'm going to use this brown. Is this a good spot for the paint? Mm -hmm. Yes, it could good. Okay, now this tree, kind of think if you divided your paper about in half, maybe I should show you on here, about in, ha about in half. The pink one's going to be further away because it's a lot smaller. So I'm just going to, here we go, I'm just going to go down. Now I can come back and fix this, so I'm not worried if it's not the right color. That's going to be okay. I'm going to mix my colors of brown. Tree, brown, tree trunks are, they're not all the same. And then this one, I'm going to put it up here. It's going to come down. It's kind of a V. Do you see that V? Okay. And then I'm going to make one, I'm going to make my trunk come down almost to the bottom of the page. Mix my colors a little, make it look more realistic, almost to the bottom of the page. Make it wider. Oh yeah, I like that. That's looking pretty good there. Then I'm going to make this one third little branch right here. It's a small one. I'm going to just make, oh, I've got too much water. Did you see that puddle? If it puddles like that, that tells you. So I'm just going to dip this right here. It's going to take it up. Then I'll get a little less water on my brush. Oh, it's not terrible, but I didn't really want that. Okay, and I'm just going to make this one come out this way. Just a little. See how it, I hold my brush straight up and down when I'm doing the really skinny part? When I do the fatter part, I can lay it down more and press harder. When you press harder, that's what makes your your stroke wider. Okay, and I'm going to just touch this up and make us a little bigger here. Oh, and I'm liking adding that color. Okay, now my other branches, I think I'm going to make after I get my uh, canopy on. So now I'm going to go to my other tree, my smaller one. And I'm going to make a V, just like I did the big one. But I'm going to make it end about there, about an inch from the back, from the bottom, because I don't want it to be too, I don't want it to be too close. Hmm. There. It's kind of skinny. I can make it bigger. There it is. It's a V. See that V? Isn't that great? I'll make it better. We can always go back and fix these. And see how he's a little further away? Okay. I think I'll make... I'm not using much water on my little brush. I'm going to make another little branch come out over here. It's kind of easier to start at the top and bring it down and press harder as you get closer, actually. There. And it's nice to have all these different colors on there, on your brown. Gives us texture. Okay, now, before we go any further, let's crinkle up our, let's get ready. Crinkle this up kind of in a little ball. And unroll it a little. Like that. And then when I'm going to mix up some color in my palette here. And when I dip it, I'll dip it in the color. And then when I put it down, I'll kind of turn it, okay? I want to leave some empty spaces 
for the birds to fly through here, okay? I don't want it just to be solid. Though if it does turn out solid, it's gonna be all right. So the first thing, the first color I'm going to use will be for the background. The background is always lighter, and then the closer you get, the darker the color gets. So the first one I'm gonna make is the yellow. I'm just gonna get quite a bit of it, pretty wet. If you have a smaller brush, it takes a little longer to get it wet. Just get pretty wet. I want it pretty wet, but then I don't want it too wet. That's the trick. The more you paint, the more you know how to do that. Okay, I mixed up my yellow there. Now, I can just leave my yellow right here Nice and wet. Okay, now I'm gonna wash. I'm gonna make a yellow green. I'm gonna just leave that there because if this dries, the thing about watercolor is you can come back and put water on it and it'll work again. So now I'm gonna make yellow green. I'm gonna get a bunch of green here. Oh, that's nice. And of course, spring green. <laughs> Love that, it's beautiful. I'll put some yellow in it. Okay, that's, I just want to have plenty. I've got to remember to leave some space in between them. Okay, this is the middle layer, because we're making layers. And then here's our dark green. Let's get our dark green. And I'll mix it with that. There it is. Oh, I need more water. You have to work kind of quickly to do this. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. So we just want three different colors. And I'm going to use my brush. I mean, I'm going to use my, my brush, my special kind of brush. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush just in case I'm going to need it to make sure that that's wet enough. I think that's wet enough. Okay, so let's try it. I'm going to put this towards the top and the outer edges. Get it like that. Okay, towards the top. Oh, I forgot to do something. This isn't going to work unless I do it. I have to get this wet for wet on wet. It's okay if you paint over your branch a little. I will... See how it comes back to life? Take some of the color off. And I'm gonna put some down here at this edge, okay? I wanna leave some, I wanna leave some white. I mean, some empty spaces. Okay, now here we go. Now I'm gonna dip it in my yellow, and this is gonna make it smoother and blotchier, which is what I'm looking for. You can tell it's wet because it's shiny, but it's not too wet, because I didn't want to get it too wet. All right. Okay, now I'm gonna go for the green. I'm gonna put this on top, the lighter green. because this is up kind of near the edge. So I'm going to leave a white spot in there. See that? Now, here's one more thing I'm going to do. This, gr this green, I'm going to put it a little closer. And this would just imagine shade is coming. It's, there's sh it's shadier here than up at the top because the sun, well, it's not quite wet enough. The sun can't shine down here as much. So the color's going to be darker when we look at it. Okay, so I can put a little up there, but just a little. Maybe I'll just touch that up a tiny bit. Ooh, I'm liking this. Yeah, just a tiny tad of darker up there. Look at, there's my white space. I'm glad about that, because sometimes I forget. Okay, 
So now I'm going to dry it. This is going to look good because we're going to put on the little branches. It's taking longer because there were some places where it was pretty rough. Okay. Now I can see what I did that might not have been the best thing was I got down really close to my pink tree, but I think it'll be okay. So what you're going to do now is you're going to switch to your next um, paper plate because we're going to start mixing some greens. I'm just, or some pinks. I'm just going to wash, wipe mine up here. And I'll just use the same one. We'll get the pink on this, and that will dry it, and then we'll start putting the branches on, and the sky, and we're pretty much finished. So I want to make some light pink. Now I don't have any white in this pink in this set, so what I'll do is I'll just make it thinner. And I'll just add a little, like that. Okay, this is going to be my my thin. No, I don't know. Maybe I'll, we'll see how those colors are. Maybe this one is going to be lighter. That purple's kind of dark. Oh, look at that. That's really pretty. I just want three shades somehow. This looks kind of orange, but we'll see how it looks. Okay, I think I'll use this one for the background, maybe. Or maybe this one. Okay, I don't need a whole lot because this isn't a very big tree. Okay, so now my wet on wet, can't forget that. And it's going to be, be behind behind my green tree. Okay. So now I'm getting my little nifty paintbrush. I'm going to use this color for the lightest. I think it kind of looks the lightest. So I dab it in there. Oh, look at that. That's perfect. Isn't that so pretty? It makes you think of um, those pretty blossoms, like when you drive to Luke and Josh's house and Donald's at Street. What is that? Twenty. 18th. It has those beautiful trees on it. Okay, now I'm going to go for, I think I'll go for this one. I'm going to put another layer. It's still, oh, that's really pretty. It's really pretty. And now I'm going to put another layer right on top. It's not as wet as it was, but still. Maybe if I just touch it with my brush. Just spread it out a little. There it is. It's beautiful. I like that. I'm going to put a tiny tad down here on the ground underneath it. You know how petals fall and make it look really pretty. And I'm going to do that with the green too. I'll have to get some green. Not much. Just a little. So they're just not hanging there. Put a little green over there also. Maybe I'll get a little more pink. 
Ooh, I'm starting to make brown. Yes, red and green make brown. They do. Gotta watch it. Okay, that looks good. Not too much. All right, I'm gonna wash up this brush now. Put it aside. I'm going to dry this. It won't take long because it's very small and it's not as puddly. Give it a dry. We just have uh, a couple more things to do. There it is. It's looking dry. It's not shiny anymore. Okay, now we're going to put in some branches. Notice these branches, like right here, you can't see all of them. It's, they're kind of peeking out from behind the leaves. We're going to try to do that. Okay. And I'm going to use my smallest brush and I'm going to hold it up like this. Now remember, V's and W's. So I'm going to start here, come out here, and then maybe I'll just go like that. You, when you look at your picture, just kind of imagine, oh, should there be a branch there? Or... One a little thicker. Can you imagine it's just peeking out from behind the leaves? Let's see, let's do one here too. you can get thin lines when you hold it up like that. All right, let's do one here. See that, see that B's and W's? All right, let's go over here now. This is an easy way to paint a tree. But I did it again. See, it would have been better for me to start over here and move that way because I am right-handed, but that's all right. See, you learn things like that. Every time you do projects, you learn something new, which is great. And every time you practice, you just get better at it. And you see new things, and that's what we like. I think that's enough. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. Now this one's a little further away, this tree. So his branches are going to be pretty small. It's not up close like that one. See where it came out really skinny there? I'm just going to make it a little fatter. Hold my brush up. Seems like it just needs something right here. Okay. I think I'm going to say that this is done. As far as that goes. I'm going to do one last thing. Ooh, I didn't bring any blue. Let me see, what will I do about that? <laughs> I can't make blue. Okay, well, I'm just hmm, going to do... Any chance you can jump over that stuff and get me the blue off the table in there? Oh, I'm so sorry. I try to remember every single thing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. Because I just want to put a tiny, tiny bit of blue sky here. 
and that'll just fill it in. See those watercolors? See, this is the great part about doing this with you. Mm -hmm. You don't care if I forget something. Oh, perfect. Thank you very much. So I'll just take this. I'm going to wipe this off a little bit. Maybe you have a clean spot because you don't want to get it purple. I guess I could have made orange. Sunset. Could have. I'm going to get this kind of wettish. Okay. And I'm just going to start patting. Remember the three P's, pulling and patting and pushing my brush. Just put it in. See, when you, you're just, we're using our imagination is what we're doing. When you look at these paintings, you just use our imagination. They don't have to be perfect. There. Doesn't that add a lot to it? I think it does. All right. And that's it. We're finished. I'll give it a quick dry. Maybe I don't need to. It looks like it's pretty dry already. I'm going to carefully pull my tape off. Be really careful when you do it. Don't be in a big hurry. Works pretty well on watercolor paper. So this little painting, just, we're celebrating spring. The Lord makes all things new. He's blessing us, and we are just so thankful. And here we are. It's all done. This is a nice little landscape. So, next class we'll have a we'll use we'll do something very different so thanks for coming and listening and watching and i'm glad we got to be together bye